and welcome to Chapter 6, The Bookkeeping Process. We're going to continue our study of hospitality accounting, and we're going to take a look a little bit at accounts and how the double entry accounting system works. So here we have our first slide that talks about double entry accounting. Double entry accounting is the process in which every business transaction affects two or more bookkeeping accounts. So every time you do a transaction, you are going to affect at least two accounts, and that keeps your equation in balance. So if we can kind of think back to our study of math or algebra, where if we did something to one side of the equation, we had to do something to the other side of the equation. So um, accounting is based on that equation, so again, we have to do double entry accounting. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is analyze the business transactions. So you're going to say, what is happening? Uh, so if I'm buying supplies for cash, what two accounts are affected? Well, supplies and cash. And once you um, determine the two accounts are, that are being affected, you say, what is the effect of the transaction? So is the account balance going up? Is the account balance going down? So I said, if we're buying supplies for cash, our cash will go down. When we purchase something, the cash in our wallet is going to be smaller or lower. Um, but we'll have more supplies. So we kind of traded an asset cash for an asset supply. Um, the next thing you're going to take a look at, and hopefully you've already read Chapter 6 in your book, um, but we're going to talk about something called a C account. And a C account is right here. If you look, this is the C account. Um, and the T account has two sides. Debits are on the right and credits are on the left. So really what debits mean is right and credits mean left. Now sometimes this is difficult for accounting students, um, so you may want to write this down somewhere or work on it. Um, but debits are on the right and credits are on the left, and this really stems from old Latin that was used way back when people were trading spice and salt and, and trying to keep track of uh, money and gold and in goods, they started accounting systems, and they started with the Latin debitrum and creditrum, and from that today we have debit and credit. And again, debits are on the right, credits are on the left. I'm really emphasizing this because it's extremely important that you understand that debits means the right and credits means the left side of a C account. Now, what becomes difficult for students is the increase and decrease side. So you can see I have assets, and my debits are on the left, credits on the right, liabilities, debits on the left, credits on the right, so forth, so forth, and so on. And all of these T accounts, debits are on the left, and credits are on the right. The difference, though, is the increase and decrease side. So depending on what type of an account it is, the increase side or decrease side may change. So an asset like cash will have an increase with the debit and a decrease with the credit. But liabilities are going to have a decrease with the debit and an increase in the credit. So you can think about that. An asset is what you own, a liability is what you owe. They're opposites, and they behave in an opposite way. So we have assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expense, and I have them all listed here. Assets and expenses have the same, increase on the left, decrease on the right. And the other three accounts, liabilities, owner's equity, and revenue, have the decrease on the debit side and an increase on the credit side. Sometimes what students like to do is they like to assign the good and bad rules, like debits are good and credits are bad. Uh, please don't do that. They're not good or bad. They don't have any superpowers. They're not evil in any way. It just is what it is. Debits are one thing, credits are another. Sometimes they increase and sometimes they decrease. I encourage my accounting students in Accounting 1 to memorize this. It really helps with their study of accounting. And it will probably really help you if you have a good understanding and an instant recall of the in increase and decrease side. When you're reading reports, when you're talking with people, you will have a better understanding of what you're looking at if you understand the increase and decrease side. And then we'll look at some business transactions here because once we um, have a business transaction, what we want to do is identify the two accounts and then we want to 
figure out the effect of it. So here I have owner invest 10,000 cash into the business. So cash is an asset. I have a T account here for assets. And we're going to increase cash by 10,000. We're going to increase it because if the owner invests it into the business, it's coming out of his personal pocket and going into his business pocket or his business checking. So the business cash is increasing. And then we're going to look at owner's equity. The other side of the account that's being affected is owner's equity. So when an owner invests into his business, he's getting a financial interest in the business. He's getting a stake in the business. He's getting a financial interest. So we're increasing, and you can see it here, we're increasing his interest or his stake in the business. He's increasing that. And that makes sense. He's going to have more cash. He's going to have more of an interest in the business. I have another transaction down here. It says owner pays monthly rent of $1,200 in cash. So we have the asset cash, and we have the expense rent expense. So both of these have the increase on the left and decrease on the credit side on the right. So we can see our cash decreasing by $1,200 and our expenses increasing by $1,200. So I have less cash and more expense here when I'm paying my monthly rent. Oops, somehow my, I flipped the screen. Sorry about that. So my final transaction has three accounts that are affected. It's an owner sells food for $25 plus $2 in sales tax. So my accounts that are affected are cash that we receive from the customer, revenue for our food sales, and the liability sales tax payable. I can't keep the $2 in sales tax. I owe it back to the taxing authority, so it's a liability. So you'll see that my increase here is for cash. I get the $27 from the customer they pay me, and my cash goes up. I also have revenue, so my revenue goes up, and my increased side is on the credit, so that makes sense. And then I also owe money to the taxing authority that I collected the $2 from, so you can see here I have the $2 increase in sales tax payable. All three accounts went up, and that's fine. We don't always have to have an increase and a decrease. You can see in our three examples here, the first one was an increase and an increase. The second one was a decrease and an increase, and the third one, again, everything went up, increases across the board. As long as we are making sure that our debits equal our credits. Here I have a debit and a credit. Here I have a credit and a debit. Here I have one debit that equals these two credits, and we always have to keep that in mind in accounting. Our debit should always equal our credits, and we always want to have at least two accounts affected. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is a term from your book called Contra Accounts. Contra Accounts are special accounts and they have an opposite effect of their account classification. So um, they are an asset like allowance for doubtful accounts, it's a Contra asset, but instead of having a normal debit increase, it has a credit increase. It works opposite. Now also withdrawals are drawing. That's an account used by the owner to take money out of their business. It's a contra equity account, and when the owner takes money out of the business, it's debited, and that decreases the equity in the business. The last one we here have here is accumulated depreciation. It's a contra asset. We talk about it a little bit in your book, but I'm not going to talk about it much here because we have an entire chapter on depreciation, so I'm going to leave that for when we get to depreciation. And I just want to thank you for watching our overview of Chapter 6. Uh, please be sure to read the chapter in your text. Um, it's very important that you understand this chapter. It's going to help you for the whole rest of the, the section. And we will review T accounts again in the Wimba session. We will do quite a bit with T accounts in Wimba. So I hope to see you then. Thanks and have a great day.